Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. Today we are driving the brand new um, Audi A3. So this car was launched amid the full-blown pandemic this year. So it arrived in late April, early May this year. And uh, because of everything that was going on in the world, it rather went unnoticed for a while. But now that we can kind of get back to our daily business, uh, it's time to take it for a spin to see what it can do. So this is the fourth generation A3. Uh, the car was initially launched back in the late 1990s and it was received rather well by um, enthusiasts out there because this was at the time the cheapest Audi you could buy. Uh, so that was important for a lot of people because, you know, getting access to certain brands is important for a lot of us out there, let's be honest. Today, it's no longer the cheapest in the range, but it is still a very big seller around the world. So the fourth generation comes with a brand new design inspired by older models and by other brands in the Volkswagen Audi group. What I mean by that is that um, up front you have a new front fascia. So we have a wider and lower grille uh, up front, the unibody grille as we all know it. Um, you can actually see its outline on the steering wheel as well. It's wider than before and it's lower than before. Actually, that's something that applies to the entire car. Uh, because compared to the outgoing model, it's wider lower and a bit longer than the older version, but not by a lot. Also up front, you can't miss the new headlights. So they have a um, DRL up at the top of them. So daytime running lights with LEDs. Uh, and at the bottom, there's an LED cluster. Depending on the model you choose, it will have a different design. On uh, S-Line models like the one we're driving, it has an L shape, a downwards L shape but on other models with fitted with let's say sport line uh, it's a 15 led cluster so that's something you need to know uh, the lights can be led adaptive lights or uh, matrix laser lights that's something you should also know whenever you're configuring the car uh, from the sides the car is lower as i said which cuts a bit into the headroom but not by much i'll talk about that a bit later on we have 18 inch wheels on this car that looks absolutely look absolutely brilliant. This is an S-line model, so you'll notice the bigger wheels, the bigger air intakes at the front, which are covered up um, for um, aerodynamics um, reasons. Um, they improve the drag coefficient of the car, so they might not look good, but they help out. And the brand new um, Audi A3 has a 0 0.28 uh, CD drag coefficient which is 0.01 better than the BMW um, 1 Series, its main rival. Um, around the back, you'll also notice the new taillights, the LED taillights with three uh, vertical prongs. Looks really good. You also will have to notice the uh, massive spoiler at the top of the tailgate, which is basically twice as long as the one, uh, as the model that's going out of production, that went out of production uh, late last here inside the cabin we also have a new design that falls in line with everything uh, audi makes these days with a couple of differences i love that fact that the uh, infotainment screen is well integrated into the dash i like the way the dash looks these vents on the passenger side might uh, blow a lot of air into your face if you're not tall enough but you can fortunately turn them off the vents for the driver located around the cockpit, the instrument the digital cluster, the digital uh, instrument cluster, they are inspired by Lamborghini. That's really easy to see. So on the A3, you finally get the new uh, digital instrument cluster. Depending on how much you're willing to spend, you can get a 10 inch um, digital screen or you can get a 12.3 uh, inch one um, for the um, big spenders out there. It's the same for the uh, central um, instrument, for the central screen for the infotainment uh, system. Now, compared to other modern day um, Audi models, um, you don't get a second screen over here, which is a good thing if you ask me, because controlling the uh, air conditioning 
and other functions of the car is done using buttons. And I much prefer physical buttons than screens because they are much easier to use. It's a very simple layout, very easy to understand, very ergonomic. The whole dash is tilted slightly towards the driver to give it a driver-centric atmos centric atmosphere. So uh, yeah, it looks really good. So depending on whether you get an automatic or a manual gearbox, you will have a different uh, central, um, central console. Um, this one is an automatic, so it has this tiny gear selector. It's electronic these days. It's uh, no longer uh, a mechanical one because these cars will get autom um, autonomous features in the future, so the car needs to be able to switch between going forward and backwards uh, by itself. So you also get a new volume button, which is rather weird because it's a touch sensitive button and you have to swivel your uh, finger on it in order to increase or decrease the volume. You can also go forward and backwards uh, using it. It's easy to use if you have a automatic gearbox because you don't have a big lever over here. Uh, but if you have a manual, it's going to be trickier to use. I think this is going to be used by the passenger and you have your own buttons on the steering wheel. The steering wheel on this car is an S-Line uh, version. Looks very good, feels very good. And it's big enough to allow you to see all the vital information inside the instrument cluster. The instrument cluster can also be uh, modified. Uh, you have three different faces for it. So it's a standard, sport or dynamic mode. And each of them has a two ways of displaying um, uh, information. So you can have big dials on, the, on both sides and the map in between, or you can have small dials and a variety of other information in the uh, surface in between them. Um, it looks very good. The graphics are great. The um, resolution is good. The animations don't have any sort of lag. And I, I like the way it looks. It's easy to read. I never had an issue with the sun, you know, blocking my view or anything like that. The seats are also really nice in this S-Line configuration. They have textile middle parts and leather on the sides, but you can configure them in any way you like. You can get Alcantara in the middle with different patterns and so on. So they are very, um, they offer a lot of side support. Um, the bolstering on the sides is really good. The headrest is integrated into the seat bag. And, um, you know, that can be quite uncomfortable at times. And the seat, um, the um, seat itself uh, is not as wide as I would have expected it to be. For people with wider uh, butts, it might be an issue, but they do look good. They uh, are a bit on the harsher side of things. I would have preferred them to be a bit softer. Then again, I am getting older and I do have some pretty bad uh, back pain from driving so much uh, over the years. So that might be just something of personal uh, preference. So wh uh, what impressed me the most though inside the cabin is the amount of space you get in the back. Uh, it's actually not bad at all. Uh, I think it's the best in the segment right now. Uh, it definitely feels like there's more room back there than it is in the 1 Series and the A-Class. So that's a big plus for the A3. As a matter of fact, with the seat adjusted in my preferred driving position, and I'm six feet tall and about 250 pounds, uh, I could sit in the back, so right behind the driver's seat. It's really impressive how much room there is back there, considering the roof is a bit lower. The boot has 380 liters of space, uh, and when you fold the rear seats, you get up to 1,200 liters if um, that matters to you. But how does it drive? Well, this car shares its platform, MQB platform, with cars like the new uh, Golf 8, the Skoda Octavia, uh, the new generation, the new Seat Leon. Um, so they will drive roughly the same, but I like this car because it's really capable. You have a McPherson suspension up front, which uh, does work really well. I didn't feel any kind of understeer driving this car, but I'm sure if I push it hard enough, uh, it will understeer. I mean, that's an uh, Audi thing, isn't it? Uh, the gearbox was right up there with me all the time, which is impressive, to be honest. Uh, it's a seven-speed dual clutch. It's a DSG. And Volkswagen had a lot of time to refine this recipe over, over the years. The engine is uh, on this car is a two-liter 
uh, TDI version, uh, 150 horsepower, 360 newton meters of torque. The way things are looking in Europe right now, it's not gonna be a big seller. Uh, people would probably go for either the one liter um, turbocharged petrol engine or the 1.5 turbocharged petrol engine with 150 horsepower. There's also another two liter diesel with 116 horsepower. And there's also two uh, mild hybrid choices uh, that use a 1.4 liter TSI um, power plant combined with a, um, an electric motor and uh, they can deliver up to 204 horsepower. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But depending on the, which version you get, there's something you need to keep in mind. So S-Line models come with a stiffer suspension, a more aggressive body style, and a lower suspension by 15 millimeters. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. Also, they come with bigger wheels. This car has 18 inch wheels, which do cut into the comfort of the car. The new A3 has adaptive dampers and they, if you get adaptive dampers, um, they have a new technology that allows them to adjust to the uh, road a bit faster, depending on the kind of surface you're driving on. Uh, I don't know if they're working or not because I didn't test the old model to make a comparison, but the car feels really comfortable when you want it to be comfortable. And it's really poised when you drive it uh, in dynamic mode, when you drive it faster. So that's something to keep in mind. Furthermore, if you get the car with less than 150 horsepower, you don't get independent rear suspension. You get torsion beams back there. Um, if you get a car with more than 150 horsepower or starting at 150 horsepower, you get a fully independent rear axle, which helps with comfort, comfort and sportiness. What I was impressed with um, in this car was just how well it responded to my inputs. Whenever I wanted it to go fast, it went fast without even having to switch between driving modes. The gearbox is, was right up there with me and I never felt the need for more power, at least if you're not trying to break the law and use your license. Now, this car will accelerate pretty hard up to 150 kilometers an hour. I was impressed by how fast it felt and how poised it was in uh, the twisty bits in, in um, curvy roads. So it's a really good feeling. It's a really good driving car. And I was surprised by it. I was even more surprised by how little fuel it sipped. So um, uh, with an average speed of around 50 miles per hour, I saw an average fuel consumption of 3.6 liters per 100 kilometers covered. That's amazing. At 75 miles an hour on the highway, the fuel consumption was under five liters per 100 kilometers covered. So, bravo, Audi, bravo, Volkswagen. This is a great combo. This two liter engine and this DSG gearbox, great, great combo. Inside the city, the average fuel consumption was around seven liters per 100 kilometers covered. Uh, and that, that's really good. Um, it would go even further up. The city was rather empty when I tested the car because of the pandemic and everything. But you know what? It's really good. And the car is well insulated. The engine is well balanced. Um, so yeah, it feels really good. Though I, it does look like I'm praising this car and it, I am praising it because it's really good, but there are some shortcomings too. And I don't think they are necessarily Audi related only. So all premium manufacturers, do it these days. And I'm complaining about the plastic used inside in certain parts. Just like every other car in the segment, wherever you put your hand, everything feels nice to the touch, but there are certain areas where the materials could have been better. The fit and finish is perfect, don't get me wrong. But this part over here, this plastic over here, is really not that great to the touch. Could have been done in a better material. I mean, realistically, you're gonna be touching this surface a lot during your time with the car. So this could have been done better. It would have been, um, it probably would have cost a bit, but it would have been uh, worth the effort. Another thing I hate is the fact that you have to pay for every single thing. This car has keyless go. So basically you don't have to take your key out of your pocket to, to drive it. You just press start and you go, but it doesn't have keyless entry. I don't know why. I mean, all you have, if you had keyless entry, you didn't have to use the key fob at all. You just keep it in your pocket. Whenever you grab the handle, the door opens and you can start the car without entering the key or, you know, shoving the key into some something. Um, but unfortunately on this car, we don't have comfort entry or keyless entry or anything like that. So basically you have to take your key out, 
unlock the car, get in, get it back in your pocket, and you just have to take it out just to unlock the car and to lock it when you leave the car. It's, you know, you have to pay for comfort access, but because it's available as an option. Also, this car has um, starts at about 34,000 euros. With all the options on it, this one is priced at 49,000. And even at this price tag, you don't get one camera on it, not one reversing camera. I'm not talking about a 360 degree system over here. I'm talking about one lousy reversing camera. There's no such thing on this car. You do get parking sensor, uh, parking sensors, but you don't have one camera out the back to tell you what you're doing when you're reversing. That's disappointing in my book. I know you can get it. I know you can buy it, but you know what? It's 49,000 euros. You should probably include it for free. But rent over, this is a great car. It looks great. I think it's the best looking car in this segment right now. It drives really good. I didn't try the RS version, but I'm, I'm sure that drives really good too. And um, you know what? It's a really good choice. Between the three main rivals in the segment, the uh, A-Class, the 1 Series, and the A3, I would probably go for the uh, A3 and be really careful about how I'm configuring it. That said, this has been my review of the Audi A3 Sportback. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and of course, subscribe to keep this channel alive. And until next time, don't forget to take care of yourselves. Bye.